Welcome to the Leadonomics Show, and today we have with us Judd Lepart from G2. Judd, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. It's great to have you here with us, and tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, and how you got to being this executive director at G2. Well, um, I've been uh, in the advertising business for about 23 years now. Um, I started on the account side um, and became frustrated with that relatively quickly. And uh, fortunately, I was working at an agency at the time where uh, they had a fairly broad view of, uh, of, of people's potential. Uh, and I was actually pushed into the creative department and I became a copywriter for a while. Uh, learned a tremendous amount about advertising as a business, actually a lot more than I had on the account side. Um, was it a tough, tough transition from uh, account side into copywriting? I mean, it seems to be a very different... Uh, it's, it's, it's an unusual move, um, certainly all, all the more unusual because I was doing it within the same agency. Um, so you obviously had some potential as a copywriter. Well, you know, I, um, uh, I've always been a fan of the, the craftsmanship of writing. Um, and I'd written some, I'd done some writing work that the, the president of the agency thought well of. Um, of course, it was a, uh, had nothing to do with copywriting, as I very quickly learned. It's a very different set of skills. Um, but uh, that might have been the first spark of fascination on my side for the, the power of storytelling. And the dif difference between um, writing something one way and writing it another way is not just the difference in the writing, it's the difference in thinking. Um, so I kind of uh, bumped into some, some limits in terms of my ability to grow as a copywriter. And fortunately at that time, uh, account planning was just starting to take root in the US. Yeah. And I was very lucky uh, to be recruited by DDB Chicago to join their planning department, okay. um, which was a terrific place to work, a terrific place to learn. Uh, and that's really where um, I, I learned most of what I know about planning um, and started to learn a lot more about the power of storytelling in marketing. Yeah. You talk a lot about storytelling, but before we get into storytelling, you've won about 50 FEs. Uh, you know, tell us a little bit what the FE is. Uh. Um, well, the, the FE is uh, uh, the, the, the most broadly distributed um, marketing effectiveness award. Um, it's present now in about uh, 43 or 44 countries around the world. Um, been in the U.S. since the late 60s, I believe, I think about 1968, so it's a little bit younger than I am. Um, so it's the Academy <laughs> Awards of Advertising, right? Um, it, it's way. often referred to uh, as the, the Academy Award of Effectiveness. Um, and effective means being brand effective. Meaning, meaning campaigns that uh, did what they were supposed to and ideally a little bit more. Um, actually, one of the, I think one of the myths of the EFI Award is that it rewards effectiveness. Actually, what the EFI Award uh, rewards is overachievement. Uh, and that makes the best EFI cases uh, a great place to learn how to do better work uh, on behalf of whatever brand you happen to be working on. So you've won 50, or in some way or form you... Well, I've, I've, had, a, I've had a hand in at 50. I mean, uh, I was very lucky to be working at DDB Chicago at a time when we ourselves realized how important uh, the FE is as a, uh, as a marketing tool. Yeah. Agencies that win FEs are uh, automatically very interesting to clients and potential clients. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I was lucky to be there at a time when we put a lot of effort into our own FE program. Right. So wh what's the secret of winning an FE? Well, I, the, it starts with having a campaign that's effective in the first place. So how do you, you, how do you, how do you have a campaign that's effective? Um, in my experience, um, it's impossible to have an effective campaign if you haven't identified the right problem to solve. Okay. And I think one of the challenges we in marketing face nowadays is that uh, because we are focused on short-term solutions and short-term objectives, um, we often skip straight to the solution without pausing to really define the problem first. And so you end up with a lot of campaigns that would love to be solutions, but they're sort of searching for a problem that hasn't really been defined yet. Right. Do you have an example of that? Um, or or well, something I, you've experienced in your life? Um, I mean, there, there, are, there are a lot of campaigns that I've worked on where had we spent more time working on really defining the problem correctly, uh, the solution we came up with probably would have been better. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I tend to have a short memory when it comes to failure, which is probably a, a not very That's desirable probably a good characteristic. Thing. Probably a good thing, you know, as long as you learn from it. Um, <laughs> yeah. And, you know, we, we, we won a lot of EFIs uh, in a short period of time in Chicago, and that really, uh, for me, was the, was the beginning of, of what's been a very fruitful relationship with EFI. Um, and in every other agency I've worked in since then, um, I've, I've been a strong proponent of FEs and you know word gets out when people know that you you seem to have a knack for winning um, they seek your help yeah. and so I've been fortunate to work with people who've been open to asking for and getting that help um, and it's worked out well for all of us. And, and now you actually are one of the judges at the FEs. Yeah I mean my, my FE judging started uh, uh, six or seven years ago in Singapore um, and 
uh, that was a lot of fun, and actually, that actually helped lead to our creating the Asia Pacific FE. Um, since then, I've been fortunate to be asked to judge the global FEs and the, the Euro FEs, and uh, it's always a terrific learning experience. I mean, no matter how smart you think you might be in this business, uh, when you read really good FE cases, uh, it's always uh, possible to learn something more. Right. That's you, you mentioned storytelling was an important element, mm -hmm. you know, as part of this whole process. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us a bit about storytelling. Why is it so important, and, and what is it essentially? I mean. Well, um, maybe I'll, I'll work backwards from the, from the FE perspective. I mean, one of the things we noticed is that um, uh, some agencies sort of came out of nowhere and started winning lots and lots of FE awards when in the past they'd only won maybe one or two a year. And we thought, well, one possible explanation of that is that the, their work has suddenly become a lot more effective, um, which might have been true, but a more likely explanation was that they simply approached their FE preparation differently. Um, we learned those lessons and we started applying them ourselves. Um, and what, what I started to think about is, um, I mean, obviously the, the, the role of the FE award is to make sure that campaigns that are effective are recognized for being effective. Uh, winning an FE doesn't make you effective, it just, it just demonstrates that you've done something that has convinced a set of people who are pretty skeptical of what it takes to be effective. Um, and I thought, well, this is something that's happening really at the very, very end of the brand building process. Uh, if it works here, why can't it work earlier, you know, more upstream in the process? Uh, and um, you know, a couple of the agencies where I was working gave me the opportunity to play around a little bit with that idea of, of taking more of a storytelling approach up front, um, partly because um, stories are driven by conflict, and conflict is just another word for problem. Yep. So thinking about what makes marketing campaigns effective that begins by identifying the right problem to solve. It's the same thing that makes a good story worth listening to. It's got a conflict that draws you in magnetically and doesn't let you go. Right, right. So conflict, conflict is, is, is relatively... So you play around with the conflicts then. What, what are some of these conflicts that, that uh, you, know, you generally play with in, in marketing? Well, um, you know, conflict uh, is, is sort of the, in the eye of the beholder and it's, it's one of the main challenges of brand management uh, to figure out which, which conflict uh, to address that where, where their brand can actually, you know, have a point of view and, and, and offer a solution that makes a difference. I mean, you've got conflicts, um, sort of brand versus brand conflicts, and that's sort of the typical uh, Mac versus PC or, or McDonald's versus Subway. Um, that sort of thing sort of happens all the time. I think some of the more interesting conflicts are actually the ones that are within the brands themselves. So uh, brands lose their way all the time because management takes their eye off the ball or because the marketplace changes and they can't keep up. And so, you know, Brand repositionings, for example, are, are, are sort of a brand versus itself kind of kind of conflict. A any memorable ones that you can you can think of? I think one, one of the one of the ones that I always like uh, uh, citing is uh, is actually Marmite, um, which is a, a love it or hate it product to begin with. So it sort of has a built-in conflict, yeah. uh, and instead of shying away from the fact that there are people who absolutely detest the way the stuff tastes, they've actually made that one of the pillars of their marketing. Uh, sort of, you know, challenging people to, to out themselves. Are you, are you for us? Or are you against us? And they don't, they're not worried about people being against them. That's actually part of the appeal. You know, you, you, you talked a little bit about uh, this whole storytelling notion being much more powerful than facts. Uh, heard you mention that before. Um, why is that so? I mean, isn't a fact much more effective? Like, look, fact uh, was this, you know, taking the fact and storytelling yeah. it. Well, um, facts can be persuasive, uh, but at the end of the day, uh, the job of marketing is to motivate people to do something that they weren't going to do you know, when they woke up that morning. And what storytelling does is it puts facts into an emotional context that makes them uh, easier to remember uh, and more importantly, easier to act on. So storytelling takes a fact that would otherwise sort of operate at one level um, and, it, and it can make it more motivating. And that, that's exactly the business we're in. Right, so storytelling actually possibly leads to sales though, versus um, facts. Ideally, I mean, you know, marketing campaigns have different objectives and it's not always about sales. Um, but putting uh, a factual, uh, putting facts into a, a story context um, makes, makes, makes it easier to remember, uh, makes it easier to share with other people, and, and as I said, makes it easier to act on. Right. So let, let's take an example. If I want to like, say, let's market this show, mm -hmm. um, you know, what must I put, I mean, in terms of my building this whole storytelling piece or the mm -hmm. story behind it, mm -hmm. and what are some criteria I should be aware of and be thinking about, you know, in terms of, you know, should the story be simple, I mean, uh, or, uh, how, you know, mm -hmm. or be complex, or what, is there some guidelines in terms of a good story? Well, uh, you know, good, good stories are, are sticky stories because um, okay. a, story, a story that sticks here is one that will get remembered uh, and, and acted on later right. on. So how do, how do you make that sticky, stickiness count? Well, um, there are, you know, there are, 
are characteristics that sticky stories tend to share. They tend to be uh, simple stories. Um, they tend to be stories where everything that's not at the core has been, been peeled away. And that, that's actually one of the, one of the challenges uh, because uh, simplifying takes time. Uh, and we live in an age that still seems to be very much in love with complexity, yeah. uh, but complexity isn't helpful. So sticky stories are, are simple, uh, they are, they're credible, um, which doesn't always mean loading them up with facts. It means taking facts that could be persuasive and expressing them in a motivating context. You know, I like to use the example, um, you can tell people, uh, you know, 37% of our employees don't understand our mission. Or you can say, hey folks, if we were a football team, you know, four of us wouldn't know, only four of us would know which goal we're shooting at. Uh, so that's the sort of thing that, that helps people remember, uh, and, and that's, that's what stickiness is about. Um, you know, using emotion at the right level, uh, again, being very specific, being concrete. You know, people have a hard time remembering abstract things. They remember things that are very specific. Um, you know, uh, dodecahedrons, uh, actually I don't know if that's a dodecahedron, but you know, they remember specific shapes, they remember you know, bicycles and avocados, they don't remember uh, equality or justice. Uh, so those are some of, the, those are some of the, the, the principles that help make stories stick. Um, and again, sticky stories are the ones that get remembered, they're the ones that get shared, and the ones that get uh, acted on. Okay, you, you, I mean you've got a fantastic background. If, if somebody, you know, a college grad, who's just graduating off university, uh, comes to you and says, hey, Judd, tell me how I can become just like you. What advice would you give that person? <laughs> I would say, well, watch out what you wish for. Um, you know, uh, planning, account planning is, um, is, a, is a discipline that um, rewards strange thinkers. Uh, and, you know, I, I'm, I'm lucky to have had the chance to work in some, even though I've been in advertising for my whole career, I'm lucky to have had the chance to work in some other areas of the business before coming into planning. And I think that's, that's, that helps me bring perspectives that I, I might not have otherwise. Certainly, the opportunities I've had to travel uh, and, and to work in different places have helped. Um, you know, fundamentally, um, success in planning is a combination of, of um, curiosity about the way the world works, uh, belief in one's ability to, to come up with interesting answers, but even more, um, it's about coming up with interesting questions. Um, and not being afraid not to have the answer, uh, but maybe having a good point of view about where a, a good answer might be found. Um, and I guess the, another, another desirable quality is simply being able to keep a conversation going. Okay, so, um, so your advice is to get these experiences early on in your life? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, uh, the best advertising people in my experience don't necessarily come from ad school. Uh, they are, uh, you know, uh, some of the best planners I know uh, are former chemical engineers or uh, firemen or uh, you know, people who've done things completely differently, but they have interesting life experience. Right, that, which they bring to the table. Yeah, yeah that, that, that puts them in a position to ask interesting questions. And that's the whole point, is to ask a question that nobody else thought of. Um, those are the kinds of things that usually lead to answers that create, that define interesting problems and then lead to effective campaigns. You know, one last question. Uh, many CEOs and many business leaders don't quite understand the power of advertising, marketing, mm -hmm. and, and branding. Mm -hmm. um, if you could give advice to a senior leader or a CEO, what advice would you give them with regards to what you do? Well, uh, that's a big question. I mean, I think um, understanding the, the, the strategic role of, of any form of communication is, is the first thing to do. Um, why, why advertise in the first place is a question that, you know, that every CEO should ask. Yep. Um, it's not necessarily something that, 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 you, that you should do, that you must do. Um, if you decide it has some value, then you need to do it in the right way. Mm -hmm. Um, which all sounds very, very theoretical, but it, it comes back to um, what a, what's, what's my offer in the marketplace? What's, what's the promise I'm making to the world? Um, is advertising the best way to express that? Uh, and if so, um, how can I come up with the kinds of stories that will be bigger than just the advertising? Uh, and I think, you know, there's some campaigns. I mean, Dove, for example, the campaign for Real Beauty, um, yep. which was, was a little bit of a cultural mismatch maybe for a lot of markets in Asia, but as we've seen around the world, you know, having a point of view, uh, even if it's a polar, uh, polarizing point of view like Marmite's, it's something that gets talked about. It's something that people react to. And I think you know, we talk a lot about positioning in, in our business, and that's, uh, positioning is, is arguably you know, uh, one of the main jobs of a CEO. Um, I, I would say the companies that want to have a positioning ought to stake out a position have a point of view about something, um, have a mission, have some convictions. And that, more than anything else, I think is the job of the CEO to, to define and to, and to express. Fantastic. Judd, really great having you on the show. My pleasure. Thanks for Judd having Labatt me. Judd Labat from G2 here on the Leadonomics Show.